Film Photography Project 319. Hey, we're back. Hey, I... We're back. I, we're, we're, we, we weren't even I, here yet. How could we be back? I first have to tell you guys how excited I am to be here. Seriously. Too. I, I'm so thrilled to be here. I'm so excited to Look be at here. you. You're like a school kid. You're so smiling. I am. I am. As a matter of fact, I thought we'd open up with a letter. Um, John, maybe you can read it. Why are you I so can excited? read. This is yeah. just like a normal episode. Because this letter Nothing's is different because it says, wow. Okay. And that's a perfect way to, to start this show. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yes. From Courtney Cole. Wow. Yes. I am super excited for the 2024 event events. Yes. Are there any details yet? Is yes. there somewhere I can check rather than bugging you every day? I shot a lot of FPP film on my winter trip and I'll be posting it soon on my IG Instagram. Well, thanks for changing my life for the better. Wow, Mike. I have this to specify a, for she, the better. She joins the long list of women whose whose lives Mike has changed. <laughs> In this case for, for the better. For the better. <laughs> Courtney, I have some great case. I have some great news for you. Oh. So uh, on April 13th, 2024, thedarkroom.com and Beers and Cameras mm -hmm. is going to have a, a photo walk and then Beers and Camera event in Columbus, Ohio. Oh. I don't know where Courtney is. Oh. But, you know, you could take plane, train, automobile. To, you could walk, ride yeah. a bike. What so, have you? So as of this moment, because really this... As of this recording, it just got announced. Mm. Uh, I'm going to be there. Matt Mirage is going to be there. Are you going to be there? Are you going to go? I don't know. I just found out about yeah, it. See, oh, you just see? found out. Maybe you could pick up Courtney on the way. Oh, yeah. To find out information about this event on April 13th, just mm -hmm. go to the social media for like the darkroom.com on their IG Instagram. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You're going to talk about it? It's yeah. on our Instagram account. What about the Facebook, the Facha book? How, uh, what would you know about Facha book? It, it's, on the fa on it's on the Facebook. Facebook uh, you can always email us, podcast at filmphotographyproject.com. <laughs> Whoa, here's another letter. Great show from Mark. What show? <laughs> uh. <clears throat> uh, wait, this is from another See? Courtney. Oh, it's not. No, come on. It is. is. the same person? Courtney Cole? It doesn't say. Oh. It says, hi, Mike. Thanks for reading my letter just now. <laughs> says, Hi, Mike. I was just listening to a show where you and John... Hey! We're talking about the old days of shooting video and then rushing to a building to transmit the video on the bird. What? Wait. I l oh, it's the HOA. It's, it is the HOA. <laughs> oh, my God. No, 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 no. Unfortunately, I have a birthday dinner planned for tomorrow and an election meeting Thursday night. You can do anything on that day. Wait, breaking news. <laughs> This just in. Mike's got a birthday to go to. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, right here. Go ahead. Thank you. I love, I love these stories. Thanks for peppering that stuff into the shows. It's just three sentences. Let me just finish it. <laughs> Thanks for peppering that stuff into the shows. What show? I find that content very entertaining. Signed, Courtney. Do you know what she's talking about? About, we were talking, John, about our corporate days. Right. And apparently, apparently, people think that our stories... No, apparently one person <laughs> thinks our stories well, are this, interesting. Folks listening, this particular podcast is also on YouTube. So there's visuals of us uh, moving our mouth and talking. And so if we're talking about the days where John and I were, um, you know, getting up at three in the morning and mm. going to a corporate event and setting up like a big room and hanging lights and things like that, or John standing on like the president of the AT&T's desk mm -hmm. and me like, he wasn't there. He didn't know. He never John and knew. I getting well, now into, he knows. Thanks. John and I like getting into an actual argument of, <laughs> of like, John, you can't. I, I remember exactly what I said. I, John, you can't stand on that desk. And John would be like, you said the exact same thing. You're like, there's, there's no nobody way. here. There's nobody Who's going to know? There's no cameras at that time. And I said, it's not right. <laughs> it's if not. John stands on a billionaire's desk and the billionaire's not there put, to see it. I think I put like. <laughs> just, did he really stand on the desk? I think I put like a table or, or a towel or something <laughs> on it. I didn't just. No, like... no. Your boots. I remember those boots. <laughs> but right. I have pictures of back in the day, we would literally wheel. Like today, what you could do on a phone. Hmm. Like I oh literally. We would wheel a control room into a hotel room, yeah. like an edit room in a Switchers, hotel room. Switchers, decks, monitors. Yeah. It was insane. And John Road and cases. crew would be downstairs shooting like a corporate event and then running tapes, videotapes up to me. And I would be edit editing them so for a presentation the next day that they would show on a big screen. Mm -hmm. So, Yeah, fun. Or yeah, doing it all night, staying up all night to finish it. 
Yeah. Those happy, what do they call them? Happy videos or uh, where you get people eating and they yeah. put it all together and oh, you got to you gotta turn on. that off. I got to turn that off. That's so obnoxious. It is. It's all HOA stuff. They're going to be talking about it on the IG, how obnoxious so. that phone is. Also, I, I uh, Andrew, I looked at the clock, you know, when this our time's up, one hour show, will you like on the glass be like, poof, 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 poof. okay, good. Get the fog out of here. <laughs> You'll just get another credit card notification. <laughs> <laughs> I did want to let everyone know on today's show. What show? Uh, we're going to be giving away the sparkle brick. Mark was kind enough to take a camera out of his personal collection. Oh, he took an Argus man. C3 and he modified it to take a, a no, it's a hot shoe. Yeah, no, a, oh, a hot shoe. For oh. folks watching this on the television, I'll put a picture. <laughs> the television uh, <laughs> on the tube. A, a hot shoe, which means you could use a hot you know, classic hot you flash. Know, yeah, use a regular like flash with it. Oh. And we're going to be giving away on this episode. All right. Yep. That's that's pretty exciting. When when Good. Mark once again came through and he modified that I have with us. Oh yeah. He modified a Kodak Duoflex two to take one twenty film. Normally these would take six twenty. So, oh, and it's did you make it red Let's or it was red? Can you open? No, it up? I made it Can red. Take a look inside. And normally it's like this: it's brown or black. Can you see the guts? Look at the look sure. at the, well, the creamy guts. guts. Yeah, he, you know, it's oh, that's I had not a, much to see. No, yeah, it's... I had to hollow it all out and oh wow, and and reshape all the light baffles to get it to fit. Wow, I'm going to uh, I call this Mike's 126 Adventures because I've only been shooting 126. No, Mike's continuing 126 Adventures. Yeah, I'm I'm I have four cameras I shot with. God. Mark's going to be talking about something called the C3. What is mm-hmm. that? Not the C3 that we were just talking about a minute ago. Different C3. A totally different C3. This big thing right here in front That's of me. That's a monster. Oh, okay. You have two of them? Almost. Mm-hmm. Okay. It's similar. 220. Uh, Save it for the show. Whatever it takes. Mark's going to be talking about uh, Yeti. Yet, uh, 35 millimeter FPP Yeti. Yeah. Yeti. I, <laughs> it's uh, an orthochromatic film. And uh, we're going to end the show talking about Harman Phoenix 200. Have you shot mm-hmm. it yet? Yeah. Oh, you have? Yeah, I had like the first test roll. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. yeah. You, you remember? Okay, great. Oh, so, yeah. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Oh, so, yeah. 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 So I'm going to talk about my 126 adventures because it's been a really exciting adventure. Yeah, it's been like 10 minutes since you mentioned 126 yeah. film. Yeah. Uh, the only thing exciting, more exciting about shooting 126 film is the fact that Mark Dalzell is interested in 126. Sort is of. he? And John has been shooting. Is he one- though? Yes, I like it. John has been shooting 126 as well. So I have the 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 cameras, which are the SLR cameras, which a lot of people don't realize that you know such good cameras were made for the 126 format. 126 format, by the way, is look at that. That's beautiful. It's a cartridge format. This is the famous Factmatic adapter, and I brought my kit. So this is actually what I took to Florida. For folks who've been listening to the show for a long time, the track man just got married. Hey, the track man! Yeah, yeah. Mm. again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Second time's a charm. And I brought my actual bag with me. So what I brought to the track man's wedding is this uh, uh, Keystone Everflash 20 camera, which is a 126 cartridge camera. This I saw that, and you shot Phoenix in it. I did. You're such a weirdo. I, I, no, no, you're not kidding. You're. It's the most... Like, what would be the craziest thing to bring to someone's wedding uh-huh. to shoot? A 126 camera, for a, sure. A 126 the... camera. People were stopping me. saying, what is that? Oh, my God. Like, people are really, really into this. Really? Huh. People yeah. or person? <laughs> person. <laughs> Not two people. The, the waiter. <laughs> hey, what's so that? I, so I brought the camera. Then I also brought this, you know, one of these off-brand titanium. Like, it's called titanium wide-angle. Titanium, yeah. really? You love those, I And know. you just hold it over the lens. You know, with a camera like this... That's how you got those amazing shots of us at the diner. Me squirting ketchup oh, on the John's right. burger. Oh, right, yeah. Right, right. That was, those came out good. So, what I was doing the entire weekend was, you know, walking around. I shot uh, Eastman X 200 black and white. Mm-hmm. I shot Phoenix 200 color, the new uh, new film. Like a maniac. I was just kind of all weekend. So, if I look through my eyepiece, like, you know, it's like not wide enough. So, I would just take the camera... The whole weekend. You can see through the lens with that camera? No. And also, I, no. I made modifications to it. Say. Because when you get close to do the wide angle... Too hot. Too hot. Yes, so I made this little... Too hot, oh. daddy. I made this little... You're like MacGyver. Yes. Yeah, I made this little thingy. It's like Mick Rasso. Yeah. <laughs> and I hold this over here like this. Yeah, wow. doesn't, that doesn't look weird at all? Yeah. You guys smile. 
spectacular. I shot with this particular camera, you know, all weekend. And mm-hmm. sometimes I would shoot with tungsten film, like 200T. If you're shooting outside, let's say dusk or at dawn, if you put the the orange filter over the flash. That looks like a very light orange filter. No, it's 85 filter. Is it? Yeah. It looks so tin. And you shoot with it, your, your I always say characters. Your characters, the people... You, the meat puppets you're shooting. <laughs> the people you're shooting, they'll appear normal, <laughs> but the background will be completely blue. Uh, did you see that shot I shot of Carlos and his friend outside? I didn't. Okay. You've modified this camera so much, you should give that one away. People, yeah, really. It's got like custom made filters. I'm a little, I'm a little too attached to it right now <sighs> to give away, but yeah. I, I, I may, I have two of them, so I, I may. Did you shoot away. with I, that Ricoh Flex SLR? That's I did. an SLR, right? Yeah. Let me tell you how, how into 126 I am. Yes. I went to the studio the other day. And I, I knelt down on the floor to the bottom shelf where my 126 cameras are. Oh, man. And I picked up my FACMATIC adapter, and then I looked, and then I put it back down. I almost, I, I, almost, I, I almost considered shooting. shooting 126. But what I found when I was down there was I have that camera <laughs> new in the box. I have the original oh. Keystone box that it came in. You're kidding. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Wow. Where did you, you get it? <laughs> look at him. Now he's Flea covenant. market. I know. He's, he's like, it. Look oh. at him. <laughs> Here, give it to me. Well, I'm a little disappointed, Mark, because you were so into 126. You did all the tests, <clears throat> testing the Vacmatic. Is it just it's in your past and you're just not interested? Yeah, in it was like 10 years right ago. Now? Oh, I'm, I'm I'm going for quality at the moment. I'm in a quality mode. Okay. Well, let's talk about quality really fast. Now, once again, like you know, we're just, I'm just doing an overview of these. Mm-hmm. John and I are doing comprehensive videos that are on YouTube to cover each one of these cameras to talk about all the the functions. Like for example, you know. The cream of the crop is the little ro- baby Rolleiflex. That's beautiful. That is cool. I but, would shoot that. Listen, listen to that shutter. Listen. Oh, oh slap! That little... Really beautiful camera. But the problem is that it will only shoot original 126 cartridges. Yeah. If you reload 35 millimeter, it just, it just, you can't, you can't shoot. Oh uh, yeah. Oh well, yeah. No. So. There's no way to modify the... You'd have to put holes in the film or... Exactly. You'd have to take a Dremel to the little tooth in the camera. Mike so doesn't want to do that. It's oh, look, no. <laughs> it's, looking for a, it's looking for a rectangular sprocket. So you actually have to take a scissor and lose one sprocket post to make oh, two sprockets one rectangular sprocket. And it's fine. Every what? Four, every, three inches? Two ha, inches? You no, know, I'm very inch? happy you asked Oh, that, look John. at that. You got a ruler. Wow. I take this in the dark room. No kidding. With the film. Now... Folks listening, right now I've only been doing this to orthochromatic film because orthochromatic film you can, you know, put a, 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 a little light, a seven watt Kodak red safe light, mm. uh, not the party bulb from the party store. That, that's not going to work. <laughs> and party every stuff. two inches, I would, I would, you know, look and see, and I would take. I'm, glad, I'm so glad you guys asked. I bought this on eBay. This is known as an embro- an embroiderer's scissor. Did you come up with this, or you watched a video or something? No, I knew. I said, you know, I'm gonna have to cut these sprockets. I'm gonna need like a like a Look really like a really fine scissor. Yeah. I shot Yeti 35 millimeter. Yeti. In a how, Facmatic adapter. How did you mm-hmm. shoot Yeti with that camera? What did you do? Oh well, this is a purely manual camera, so you have your shutter speeds and your f stops. Yeah, it only goes to 2.8, though, isn't it? Is it 2.8? You must have been, like, tripod, full sun. How are you doing full that? Full sun. Yeah. I shot John. Yeah. Huh. And it gave that, you know how, like, when you shoot with orthochromatic film, it gives you that chromey kind of tan look? You know, when you shoot ortho, you get that chromey kind of look on the skin tone. It darkens. No, you know what? I, you know, I'm trying, to, I'm trying to think of what you're talking about because I never shoot people. That's why. I never shoot people. Because I just shot a roll of Yeti, like, two, yeah. three days ago, but oh. I didn't take a single person on the roll. So I'm going to... So John and I are doing a video covering the Rolly SL26. I mean, look, these are DIY projects. Not like not everyone's going to be as devoted to like go into the dark room to, to snip your film to shoot with it. But this is a super quality camera. It it you know it's a beautiful lens. Uh, there are additional lenses you could buy for this oh, camera. Oh, no kidding! Yeah, this is what length is that? Fifty. Uh, this is the equivalent of this is a uh, forty-five. Which is great. That's nice. Yeah. So, great. I'm I'm looking forward to shooting more with this camera. And then... Do you think you're going to get extra... You're going to go hunt down lenses for that camera? 
you know, you're gonna, aren't you? I see it in your face. It's kind of like <laughs> I don't know. You ever get that feeling, Mark? Like you guys, like when you get something, you're like, oh, I'm gonna find the extra lenses. Yeah. Oh, I'm gonna find. I'm gonna talk about that myself in okay. a little while. Yes, I know exactly how that feels. Even, <laughs> even though you know in your heart of hearts that you're like, I'm gonna buy all these lenses and I'm gonna use them once. So, but 126 film for folks who don't know. That's what I did with my Pentax Auto 110. I had to collect all the little tiny lenses for that thing and then never used it again. If you can't see this, I'll, I'll cut in shots as needed. Uh, but, you know, 126 film is 35 millimeter with film, but the sprockets are they're rectangular. Sprockets! And they're like every inch and a half, two inches, as opposed to 35 millimeter, which is the problem in 126 because there's so many sprockets. They just get hung sprockets. up. Sprockets! They just get hung up in these cameras. So the sprockets. And each Lose camera, them. each 126 camera you buy, you have to find out what the idiosyncrasies of that camera is. Like for the Everlast 20, like can't use the Facmatic, but you can use 126 reloads with 35 millimeter. And then this camera, Leslie sent me this camera. This is the Ricoh 126 C Flex. I, I originally I loaned you one, but you didn't like mine, so then Leslie gave. When you took, uh, Mark brought the Rico 126C Flex in, and I gave it some dirty looks. And then you I said, You it. And he said, you, you said, you said, you want me to leave that? And I was like, eh, no. Nah. I, like, I, I, I may have gestured, like, take it away. Yeah. And then the. the Be gone. The, the bonus, the, the day you after. You spit on me. You don't the, remember that? The day after I regretted that. I oh, like, okay, good. Geez, well, the camera. <laughs> we can tell. Well, this is a camera show, isn't it? Is that Okay. <laughs> I guess. Jesus. So the great thing about the Ricoh Flex, I'm also going to do a video about this, is it's a fully manual camera, and it takes two different types of batteries, but you don't really need them. For example, one battery powers the uh, flash cube, and the other ba battery powers a auto aperture, which is totally not necessary. Auto. Uh, no. You just don't need it. Oh, oh that <laughs> squeaks. Yeah. It's, what is that? Wheeze. <laughs> it's a wheeze. It's like the Canon tuberculosis. Did, did you... <laughs> Did you bring yours? <laughs> no. Okay. Does yours sound better? Uh, same. It's got that same. Uh -huh. really? Yeah. So I, I actually gave it to Mark to check. I was like, Mark, can you check the shutter, please, for me? And yeah. you did, and you said it's perfectly fine. Cause, yeah, because you thought it was running really slow, but it just it sounds uh -huh, because yeah. that's the that's the uh -huh. mirror going up, but the actual shutter speeds are actually surprisingly good. So I've shot with all these cameras and on the video podcast, you guys can see, folks at home can see the shots that I've shot with these. Now look, you know, for example, John and I are going to go to a jazz show in jazz. a few days. Next Saturday. Yeah, I've been shooting so much 126 and all of my shots are like grindy, the sprockets, like it's mm. a real, uh, what would you call it? Um, mm. You know, Offbeat. Oh, they're yeah. all off. Everything. Yeah. It's all even Trackman said. What's with the sprockets? Because I shot his wedding. <laughs> Too hip looking. <laughs> he shot his well, wedding can... on a one ten camera. On a one twenty six camera. <laughs> oh, one twenty six. Yeah, 126. it would have looked yeah. better on a one ten camera. Oh my goodness. With that weirdo. Well, Phoenix. you can we can yeah. reframe them in uh, post production. Yeah, get no, rid you, of the you, sprockets. You can. You can't crop. But when I go out to shoot a jazz show with John. I'm, you know what? I, I, I'm saying to myself, you know what? I'm going to bring a camera that I can shoot normal pictures. I'm going to bring mm. one of my Canon EOS, EOS with a 50 millimeter 1.4 lens. I'm going to bring an extra wide angle lens. What film are you bringing? Is it a nighttime show? No, daytime. No, day. you know, it's oh, indoors, oh. though. I'm well, I was because I was going to say, you've got, you've got that Canon 1.2. That would be good, like in a nice yeah. dark club with the uh, lights and stuff. Somehow I still want to shoot Phoenix 200. We're going to talk oh. about Phoenix oh, okay. in a little bit, but. I, I may just bring like Portra 400. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm, I was picturing black and white, but yeah. yeah that's cool. If I was going to bring black and white, I'd probably bring the Sfema Photo 200 or mm -hmm. Photo 400. I agree. Yeah. Just a nice clean, you know, because these are pictures I'd like to share so that the person looking at them isn't giving you like, you know. Why so artsy? Yeah. I don't get it. Like they give you the I don't get it look. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So... You're like, you like these? Exactly. Can, can you take one with your phone too, please? <laughs> yes. <laughs> can you just take one good one? No, so, not sideways like this. <laughs> so that's the story. I've been having this 126 adventure at the FPP. Uh, you know, I, I've been in the darkroom in the morning reloading 126 cartridges with film. We offer the Facmatic. 
when I can, I source expired 126 film. And um, please give you know give us a write podcast at filmphotographyproject.com. Let us know. Bubba 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 bubba. Let us know what you think. Mm-hmm. And uh, we'll be right back. I want to ask you what you think. Oh, you want to ask me what I think? Yeah. All right. So I'm lo- I loaded my camera with oh, the Sensia. It's a different it, topic. I know. But I just, I want to start We're shooting. off the air right now, so. I want to start shooting. No one can oh. hear this. It's, it, can it, hear it. It expired <laughs> in 2001. Should I rate it at 200 or should I just, what? Where's it been? A little bit. It was in my fridge. Fridge, but, not fridge. But where is it before it was in your fridge? I don't remember. You should rate it I'd at give it at least a 100. stop. 100? Yes. Oh, shit. But this is this is good good conversation. Yeah. Yeah, it's, well, it's Mike's about got film. A, oh, you don't have... Oh, you've got it three, so you don't have a hot shoe. I was going to say, Mike's got... Hot shoe? Does your, does your no, flash have a PC cable on it? No, I bought my tripod. Yes. I bought my tripod. Well, I want to do some long exposure. Oh, okay, because I was going to say, Mike's got a flash there. Yeah, I, got a, I brought a flash. All right, we'll be right back. Eastman Kodak Company is happy to bring you America's favorite family, the Nelson. Ozzy, Harriet, David, and Ricky. They enjoy good times together. And like most of us, they enjoy good times over again in pictures. No matter where you go, no matter what you do, good times are twice the fun when they come home with you. Save your fun in pictures. If you are not already taking lots of indoor pictures, why not get started this week? Tomorrow, get some flash bulbs and several rolls of Kodak film. Save your fun in pictures, cause fun's more fun when you do. Remember, your surest way to better pictures is to insist on the name Kodak. And now Kodak invites you to enjoy the adventures of Ozzy and Harry. Hey, we, we're back. We, we were already away. I know. Hey, we're back. So we're going to, okay. as promised, we're going to give away our uh, sparkle brick. By the way, you, <laughs> I, John's been insisting that that Nikon be on that tripod, on the table. I know. Shut up. When we were setting up the shots, I'm like, John, that's camera. The okay, don't move. Because go. this is going to be like a two-second exposure. It's going to be, I can't see, God damn it. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, it's only like That was like a second. Four. So, John, you're going to close your eyes. And I'll kiss you and you're gonna, like, tomorrow. See, I got them fanned out. And you're going to like feel oh. with your fingers. And you don't know. Like, you, you got to, gotta, gotta, like, you know, go through them this all. This is real. This is happening. Oh. This is real happening. Mike, this, this is, is some, not fixed. This not is fixed. some heavyweight envelopes. They're so good to the touch. Make sure you touch them all. I like this one. Okay. Give it to Mark. And oh, the winner wow. is? Do Karnak. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't he always rip from the end? Oh, wait. The silliest name Mark could think of for an <laughs> Argus C3. Uh, <clears throat> Hi, FBP crew. Thank you for reading my last letter. I'm happy to hear you enjoyed the Baston-themed candy. Oh, it's this guy. Oh, that guy. He wins. I should have clarified. Alex is short for Alexandria, not Alexander. Oh, since... Uh, since I last wrote, I have signed up for a film class starting on February 29th. Unfortunately, the only one in my area is a couple hours from me. I'm looking forward to using a real dark room versus my apartment bathroom. I would also like to enter for the Argus C3 giveaway. As someone still new to photography, I would greatly appreciate an additional camera to learn on and use. It would definitely not be sold. Thanks again, Alex, Andrea, uh... Seamer. Sorry, I can't quite read the last name. Seamer. Uh, P.S. Sent cosmic brownies this time because that was the most on theme snack I up. could think of go, for Sparkle Brick. Hold those up to the camera. Isn't this what they do on cameras to make it focus? <laughs> uh, I sent via Amazon because it's free shipping. Oh, well, that makes sense. Cool. So we got to eat Sparkle All Bricks. Right. Let's have some sparkly cosmic brownies. 
Da, 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 da. Here's ready. the gorgeous camera. Won't do it. This is from Elliot Oat. Elliot Oat Payne. Now, hmm. Elliot What's that? also sent us a gift. Oh, wow. Sent us... I'm sorry you didn't win. Oh. oh. Fancy. Yeah. Intense orange. Never mind. Sorry, Alex. Pass those over. <laughs> that makes little, <laughs> this makes little Debbie look like... Uh, oh. I like that oh. one. This is from Bradley Bull. Bradley regularly writes in. Bradley took the time. Yep. Sorry, Bradley. He drew a picture of a, uh, of a late 40s, early 50s model, though. So that's great. And this episode, we're going to be giving away, once again, courtesy of Mark Dalzell, Kodak Duoflex. Don't expect this every month. <laughs> <laughs> I just was on a, on a creative kick. Kodak Duoflex 2 camera. This is a 620 camera that's been modified to uh, take 120 film. Modified. Now, as of right now, this flash does not work, but the flash does pop right off. It comes right yeah, off. Yeah, so you could... You know, this is a waist level camera, you know, mm. checked out by Mark Dalzell. Fully disassembled, rebuilt. Look how clean the viewfinder is. It's like gorgeous. And once again, it's custom. The fact that, you Yeah, know, this is what they normally look like. You can show that Yeah. One. Normally they're brown or black. And who's this? This is yours? Oh, that's a Duoflex 4, but same idea. You that's mine. Yeah, I just brought it to compare the difference. Film Photography Podcast, Attention Duoflex 2, P.O. Box 264, Fairlawn, New Jersey, 07. Four one zero zero seven four one zero. So we'll say till we'll we'll accept entries till <clears throat> April thirtieth. What if this doesn't air until April twentieth? Eleven fifty nine p.m. Twenty twenty year twenty twenty four for those for those watching this in the year twenty thirty five. Sorry, it passed. some people might <laughs> it passed as I, as have I. <laughs> <laughs> Probably. <laughs> All right, you guys, uh, we're going to take a quick break. We'll be back with some topics. You guys need to like clean up your, your, your area That's there. John, where'd you put yours? Oh, you're a slob. I'm going to give our technical director, Andrew, full power to come in and like... like be like, you, get out, banned for life. I got right. nothing. I'm clean. Can I have some chocolate? Yeah. You ought to make some movies and star your family. You ought to take some movies, for oh, what stars they will be. Now you can make your family movie stars. It's easy with a new brownie movie camera by Kodak. Outdoors, indoors, all year long, you'll get wonderful movies in action and color. Ask your Kodak dealer to show you his complete line of brownie movie cameras. They're remarkably inexpensive. And scenes like these, in color, cost no more to shoot than snapshots. Imagine having color movies of your own family. Movies you can enjoy whenever you like. You ought to make your family all movie stars today. It's thrilling and it's easy, the Kodak way. Hey, we're back. So now people could like actually not just hear but see us chew and talk. Yeah, I know. See how disgusting right. it is. Yeah, John's, and they can actually see shards now. Right here, John's you got them. Teeth. Look, there are chocolate shards on this paper. Yep, shards are everywhere, just like crumbs. Uh, uh, crumbs. Andrew, our technical director, is going to um, charge us a cleanup fee. <laughs> that may be. He finds chocolate like bits. It's going to be like shards. Mark brought in uh, what's called a C3, not the Argus C3, hmm. but... Yeah, I only shoot cameras that are called C3 from now on. <laughs> right. <laughs> I'll take that letter. That's the winner, winner, chicken so dinner. So t- take it yeah, away, Mark. The Mamiya C3 this time. So this is a big honking beast of a That's TLR. huge monster. Yeah. So um, Mamiya in the uh, 1940s had come out with a camera called the Mamiya Flex, which was their little TLR. Uh, and starting in... Um, See, now now people who are actually watching will be able to see me keep glancing at my notes because I keep forgetting. Ha, in uh, 1956, uh, they came out with the original C model, which was uh, designed more oh for professional viewing. And what it does, which is really cool compared to every other TLR you've ever seen, first of all, it does this. Check this out, Mike. It goes and goes. It just goes and, and goes, goes forever. And goes. It has these bellows. And goes. Bellows. So you can focus down to like eight inches, which is really cool. Yeah. 
The other thing it did, which is completely unique to uh, the Mamiya, there's no film in this anyway, so it doesn't matter, but if you push this little lever down. Oh. What is that? You can swap out oh. your lenses. Look at that. So in the middle of a roll, you can swap out and put on a 65 millimeter lens and then shoot a couple and take it off, put on your 205 millimeter, try to put on your 80, whatever you've got. So they made about seven or eight different lenses that you could get. Um, there's a little baffle in here that you can flip up uh, oh, look at so that. that. So it blocks off the film. Can you kind of hold that towards the camera, please? <laughs> Gorgeous. Oh, Sheldon. Yeah, so it's got this little baffle that you flip up and down, and it blocks off the oh, film. Are those different years, those two cameras? Different years and different models. But, yeah, I'll, 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 I'll sort of get on it, because I was always really confused about what all of the, what all the Mamiya C models were, uh, and then finally sat down and did some research, and I figured out it's actually a really it, simple huh? system. Huh. Yeah, just unhook that. Yeah. It's really is like in. plug and play, man. Yeah, it's really nice. Uh, and all of your apertures and shutters and everything are built into the lenses themselves. So the, the camera itself is just a box with some bellows that holds a roll of film. Bellows. So that's really simple. So what they did was they came out with, uh, so originally, they, they came out with the C in 56. Um, then they came out with the C2 in 58. Uh, when did they come out with this C-3PO? <laughs> <laughs> I don't get it. What does that mean? C-3PO, Star Wars. Okay. R2-D2, where are you? At last. Where have you been? So the C-2 came out in uh, 1958. Okay. And then this is the... C-58? Yeah, it was a 50. Yeah. And then the C-3, which came out in um, 62. So that's what this one is. It's 1962. This was basically the third version of the original C. Then what they did was... They split the line into a sort of professional line and a sort of aimed at amateurs, but still like a really good amateur line. Mm -hmm. So they went back, they took the C3, they went back to the C2, and they split them into the C22 and the C33. And then that went along for a couple of years, and then those turned into the C220 and the C330. Hmm. And then there were a couple of other C330s. Wow. There was... There was a C330F, C220F, a C3, a couple different versions. But basically, the difference between them was the, the, the models that have the three in them always have the big crank winder on the side, like a Rolly Flex does. Mm -hmm. um, and they yeah, usually, the th this is, the C3 does not have auto cocking. You, either this one, you just have to manually cock it to shoot. Um, oh no, now it's stuck. Broke. Uh, but, because uh, oh, I have to actually tell it when I wound oh. the film on, but there's no film uh, in it. There's no film in it. So, um, auto cocking, that kind of thing. It's got the lever on the side. Uh, these tended to be heavier. The C2 series, the, the 22 and the 220, were a little bit lighter. They have the knob wind on the side with a little flip out cranker. Um, and just not quite as many features as they did, as the, as the three series models did. They use the same lenses. They use the same. Oh, cool. They use the same everything. These so, lenses will go on there. You yeah, they, they're all totally oh, interchangeable. Okay. Everything on these cameras is modular, so you can take off your viewfinder and swap them around. You can change out. Yeah, what happened to that? This one's yeah cracked. Yeah, I gotta so I cracked. gotta put a new piece of glass in there. But oh. Oh, sorry, starting with the three thirty and the two twenty could also uh, accept. Uh, 220 film natively, so there's just a knob on the side that you can just oh, flip to move the pressure that's plate. That's convenient. Um, the C33 and the C, maybe the C2, the C3 for sure, you could run C20 in it, but you had to replace the whole back. So this, there's little pins here that you push in and the back comes off, hmm. and you can put a 220 oh, back on it. <clears throat> Not just, so convenient, but yeah, it's just still a little pressure cool. plate thing. Um, so yeah, they're really cool. I, I love, they look really serious. Uh, I love the fact that you can focus down to super, super close. So I went out uh, this past weekend and shot a couple rolls in the three. And uh, every opportunity I got, I would find something and just get right up close to it and get these gorgeous six, you know, six by six. It shoots 120. So get these gorgeous, like, super close up six by sixes. Um, but otherwise, it, it really feels a lot like shooting a Rolly Flex, if you're familiar with the Rolly Flex. Uh, it's easy to load. It, it has frame counting in it, so you don't need to use the red window or anything in the back. And Very professional camera. Ironically, uh, the C3 and the C33 and the C330 go cheaper on eBay, on the used market, than the two models for some reason. Because you would think that having this cool crank on the side would make it more valuable. No. Uh, but uh, you can get a good working C3 on eBay for, like, under $100. Hmm. 
Um, this, the uh, C220s and the C22s generally go for like 150 to 200 in good condition. But like you were saying earlier, I was like, how much would it cost to get other lenses? And I started looking them up. And even on KEH, like the longest lens they made for this was 205 millimeter. And the 205 millimeter lens on KEH is like $38. <laughs> So I could definitely see myself collecting all of them if they're all going to be 40 or $50 a piece and getting a good collection of them. I'd like to have, you know, it's, I, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try the 65 next, which would be the equivalent of like 45 or so millimeters on 35 millimeter, I think. Or no, sorry, maybe a little, like 35 millimeter. This is like a 50 millimeter equivalent to 80. Um, all the way up to the, the 205 millimeter you can get this, get for this would be the equivalent of like 130 millimeter, like a portrait lens. So I'd like to get that lens. And for folks listening, these are waist level viewing through the lens cameras, TTL. Am I correct? TTL, they're known as? Uh, no, TLR. TLR. Not, you're not oh, looking so through the, yeah, you're not looking through the T film. T oh, it, has, it has a taking lens and it has a viewing lens. That's right. why it has two <coughs> lenses. Right. And Is these, it taking or tacking? Taking. <coughs> and these, and these yeah. both uh, take 120 <coughs> roll film. Mm-hmm. 120 or 220. As oh, they have a, you, you could switch. Yep. Yeah. yeah, the C3, okay. the C, uh, sorry, the C220 and 320, <coughs> has a knob. 330, just has a knob right here that you can just switch right away. That's amazing. you got to swap the back out. That's when you got to swap the back yeah, out. Because I was actually listening when you were Thank talking. Thank you, John. How You're many welcome. shots per, per 120 roll? 12. And how many shots per 220 roll? 24. Okay. Are you I testing me? No, no, it's not not a test at all. <laughs> oh, for folks listening, I just want folks at home to know 120 film and 220. I mean, they're the same except the 220 has more exposures per roll. 220, I don't know if any companies actually make 220 right now. There's no current 220 now. Yeah. So the, and the difference is if you hear talk about pressure plates. So inside the camera, the the back of the camera is pushing up against the film. Yes. And that's what you're shooting onto with 120 film. You've got your backing paper, yes, and then the film. So the 120 film is a little bit closer to the film plane. Mm -hmm. So when you use 220, it's actually gonna it doesn't have backing paper, so it'll be out of focus. So when you it moves the pressure plate, extra. yeah, when you rotate it to 220, it pushes your pressure plate ahead, the thickness right. of a piece of paper. So that's that's, that's why some cameras are <clears throat> interchangeable. Are these recent acquisitions, or have you had these cameras on your shelf for a while? I've had these for a long time. I did shoot the the 220. I shot years and years ago. The C3 I never really used, uh, so I just pulled this out for the first time. Um, I actually got these at – oh, you didn't go with me. There was, a, there was a little camera repair shop in, like, North Bergen that went out of business. Like, oh, the old I guy died, and I went and cleared out all his inventory. Oh but when I used to go – oh, Roman. The, Roman camera. The, the camera manual guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So when he was still alive, um, I used to go in and talk to him, and he had these, like, sitting in an old dusty showcase just as junk, and I said – can I buy them? He's like, yeah, sure. I think he said, <laughs> he's like, yeah, you can have them both for like a hundred bucks or something. Right. Um, so that's where I got it, but I never really used it. And to go back to talking about, this is sort of a professional system camera. Because they're so modular, you can get tons of options and add-ons for them. So oh. it doesn't have to be a waist level viewer. Yeah. So this is a that's full so metered clunky. prism. Oh, that's pretty cool. That's so this so clunky. Has actual it looks so Russian. I know, but it's – and then they also made a – they made a, a big giant handle for it. Uh -huh. So you hold up the big handle on one side. You're cranking it on this side like it looks so cool. That would look cool. You should get the handle. Yeah, I don't have the handle. So I, I have a bunch of – have... the flash port? Uh, on the, on the uh, oh, tripod. On the... If folks at home go to Flickr.com and search Mark Dalzell. By the way, who are those other Mark Dalzells on Flickr? It's Imposters. Like... I was going to say, who... Are there really yeah. other Mark Dalzell? Yeah, there's other Mark Dalzell. Yeah. Uh, Holy I smokes. Guys. I hate those guys. You could look up. You could find... Aren't you Mr. Mark Dalzell? Not on Flickr. Oh. So, of course, if you're watching this video podcast, we'll be showing some images that Mark shot with this camera. Uh, will you be shooting with this camera again? Yes. Okay, great. Yeah. I, I became too reliant on my Roly Flex, so I'm, I'm enjoying finding another good okay. TLR to shoot, because I do really love TLRs. Let me get a shot of those. We'll be right back. Two with extra cream, no sugar. Three with sugar, no cream. One with cream and just a teeny little bit of sugar. One with All no that cream and sugar hides something in coffee, coffee and it just might be the bitter taste of caffeine. Caffeine tastes bitter. Well, decaf has nothing to hide. It's decaffeinated. Caffeine's bitter taste is gone. Buy a jar of decaf. Shot. Action. <laughs> he knocks the camera over as he sits back down. Great. Don't give me any ideas. 
Hey, we're back. About a year or so ago, we released FPP Yeti film. It's a 16 millimeter and 35 millimeter film. 16 millimeter for motion picture, of course. Uh, 35 millimeter for your still camera, or if you happen to have a 35 millimeter movie camera, some of our listeners actually have them. Yes. And have been shooting them. Yes. Like, like With Yeti? Yeah. Like the, I don't know about Yeti. <laughs> uh, the Sonic, for sure. Oh, well, yeah. But this is an orthochromatic film. I brought, first of all, I brought this box for you that uh, James Har sent us. Thank you. Har? J- so James sent the box for John, Har. Oh, thinking yeah. he was the low ISO guy. Yeah. And, J- and Mark is actually a low ISO guy. I will give you some boring high ISO film in exchange. So <laughs> okay. our Yeti film, it actually has like a, a little Yeti guy on That's it. That's how I know it's Yeti. Uh, it's an orthochromatic film. It has a beautiful... It's yellow. Yeah, yellow. Yeah, hold that. Look at the crazy color. Has now a, that people can see it. Beautiful yellow base. Mark Dalzell is really into low ISO films. These opinions and the experiences, like you can't buy these. No. Like I can't... Like if Mark Dalzell's not into something, you're not gonna do. It. He's not gonna do it. There's no response. You just you no just, amount of money. You're just gonna say, "Leave me like, alone." Mike. Not interested. I I, I can't no. talk about that. Right? I mean, I'm not kidding. It's true. But then, like 16 millimeter, or uh, you keep harping and just going after me, and I I just I keep saying no. You haven't gotten them yet, Mike. But I gave a roll of Yeti to Mark, and he shot it. Yeah. What is your experience nah, with it? It's not. It's not for me. <laughs> All right, for, we'll be back. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, it's great. Uh, you know, I love I, I love low S I S O. I love super fine grain stuff, and that's what this is. Super, super, super fine grain I S O six, which you should not be scared by. So you don't be scared by it, John. Oh, sh- don't be feared. Well, not a lot of cameras go down but there, and then you have to do they math. Do. You're shooting one right now. But when oh, you mentioned when you mentioned I S O six, John, who's an experienced shooter. Said, oh, like, scared. Scared. like people don't, scared. they can't process the information yeah. of it's it. It's new. No it pun does, intended. It just doesn't seem to make sense so, in the real world. But but look at it this way. Yeah. So your Nikon F3, mm-hmm. you have a 1.4 lens on it. No, 2.8, sorry. Oh, 2.8. But uh, you've got a 1.4. Everyone's got a 1.4. I do. But you, you could easily shoot this handheld on a sunny day outside. You don't need a tripod. So I, I took- Will that be wide open at 1.4? Uh, no, sunny around, day. I would say F, F2 around like a 60th really, or maybe a 125th and you'll shoot on a sunny day, no problem. So it's totally manageable. Um, with, with, uh, my F3, I was trying to not constantly shoot it at 1.2. Um, but it was telling me like 1000th shutter speeds, like really quick shutter speeds. So I was rolling it back to like two and 2.8 sometimes hmm. when I was shooting it and it has no problem with it. The F3, um, the, like the native... Uh, ISO counter goes down to 12, yeah. and then you can like push it one more stop with oh, the exposure right? compensation, so you just go one more click. Oh, I see. Or if you go, you can shoot ISO 3 if you go two clicks, and that then it just up meters. It's really easy to mm. use. You can shoot it on a sunny day, handheld. It's not like, you know, super freaky, like if it was the 0.8 ISO yeah. or the point th- you know yep. point three ISOs, those you have to use a tripod. That gets complicated. But yeah, it's totally manageable. And yeah, I, the the pictures I took are up on Flickr, um, and you can see just how just smooth and like sharp, but not like harsh, like right. you know, just really, really beautiful. So yeah, I like it. And Paige K. Davis does it again. Paige K. Davis the did the art, pa- the art. That's so great. Art by Paige. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah. So would you shoot with it again? Yeah, definitely. I, and I have a few more rolls of it, so I'll, I'll definitely be taking it out again. I would say ISO six would be as low as I would go for just a regular, I want to go out and shoot some pictures. Like, I'm going to go to the beach this weekend. I would happily throw a roll of ISO right. 6 in your in your camera if you want black and white. Um, and it'll be fine. It's not going to be... Beach is even brighter. Right. Yeah, you, you'll be totally fine with it. Yeah. So I would say ISO 6. I'm not even going to call that low ISO anymore because you can just shoot it in what? a regular camera on a regular day. That I like. Oh, my God. That's not even low. That's... You know what? You know what my gra- well. my grandmother used to say. No, use a nuts. <laughs> use kids. Use Have you used nuts. this MZ three? No. Could you hold that up for the camera? Why MZ three? That that's was, that's what it's called. That's what it was called. Yeah, that's what it's called. Cool. Hey, you know what? Uh, just yesterday on on the Instagram, um, the um, Svima official followed me. I didn't even know there was a Svima, Svima official. Uh, neither did I. Yeah, they followed me. They didn't like any of my stuff but they followed oh. me. There's such a thing. So what are you on Instagram? 
Um, uh, Chunky Lover 69. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Mr. Mark Delzil. Okay, great. That's, in, that's Homer Simpson's email address. <laughs> in the, uh, is that true? Yeah. In the uh, end of the show, of I'll have is. credits. Okay. Yeah. I can't even see. So, uh, who, who put three. white writing on orange? Three. I did. 24 ISO 3, develop standard bois. So, this is a Sphema emulsion, by the way. This is a famous Sphema emulsion. Okay. Did, did you so, uh, do this or did Paige do this? I did that. Yeah, I know. You yeah. Can tell. <laughs> There's no little monsters. Look at the difference. <laughs> So, hey, we're getting ready for 2024 uh, Halloween, and we're thinking oh. we're toying with the Jekyll oh, Hyde. This one's oh, it'd be great. Should one canister have Jekyll, the other have Hyde, or should it be like one side of the canister Jekyll, the other side of the canister Hyde? Wow. I don't know. Oh, boy. No, the outside is Jekyll, the inside is Hyde. Oh. The actual the canister, canister is Hyde. The container says Jekyll and Hyde, and when you open it, you don't know if you're going to get Jekyll and Hyde. Oh. And they're different films. Collect them all. That would be cool. <laughs> That's a great idea. That would be really, it really cool. is a good yeah, idea. We're still toying with that. You don't idea. know which which of the uh, presentations. One of them's like grainier yeah. or something. That so we cool. have one last topic. <laughs> we're 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 quickly running out of time. Oh, we HOA! Well. You put the oh, sounds back God. on. This is wasting our time. <laughs> Garbage disposals, compliant swimming pools, children handrails. We'll be we'll be right back. Hey folks, Mike Rosso here, Film Photography Project, here to talk about, yes, 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 Yeti, Yeti 35mm film. It's an orthochromatic film. The intended use of this is lab work in 35mm motion pictures that would make titles from this film. As you can see, it's pale yellow. It's ultra-fine grain and creamy tones make it perfect for use in your 35mm SLR camera. It is a low ISO. It's ISO 6. What? In many 35 millimeter cameras like Canon EOS or your Nikon automatic camera, you can dial your ISO to 6 so you could use your camera in the automatic mode. It's here at the filmphotographystore.com. Also available in 16 millimeter. Hey, we're back. Can I take a sip? Yes, yeah, take a sip of water, okay. John. I like that. You need the Facebook. Let me, uh, let me check in with our technical director. Okay. Okay. How are we doing on time, Andrew? Oh, that's a lot of, oh! that's a lot of profanity from the Final <laughs> Three. <laughs> final like three that? minutes? Yeah. Oh, wow. Word, word on the street, Andrew, you're not going to hold us to the actual three minutes, right? <laughs> wow, that's a lot of profanity. No, we're going to go. We're going to go. Yeah. So, uh, so this has been, for folks who have been listening, you may not know, but this is you know, we've tried it many times yeah. going back to 2011 video podcasts. It's always been a major fail. Yes. Uh, last year in Cleveland. Uh, that we, was a success. That was a success. Matt Mirage was our TD back then. We did YouTube Live. Uh, that was a lot of fun. Yeah. There was an amazing amount of clutter in the background. Yeah. It was a hotel room. So yeah. in the background, it's just like all ah, like. That added to the ambiance of the event. Uh, it didn't. No. <laughs> okay. No. No. It was, it's trying to cover. And if you go to that video, like, as soon as it cuts to me first, like, there's a puss on my face. Like, it's like, you don't want to be there face. Because it was like, serious. Was that the way you felt? Yeah. You didn't want to be there. Oh, my God. No, well, I wanted to be there, but you, didn't you know be... how you get there and you sit, like, it's just, you know. Well, it's all that, the, the, you know, all that stuff ahead of time and you sit down, you finally sit down and you're like, okay, let's do it. And you're like, oh, I'm exhausted. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. I was like, oh, hey, welcome to the, I'm just so stern. Like, it's just, you know. This, and this is the show tonight. Yeah, exactly. Going to Walter. I Park, give right. a lot of credit to performers. You know, I think of like Kimmel or that mm. Tonight Show guy. What's Steve his name? Colbert. All those guys. It's like, it's all goes back to like performers. Al Lewis, the, the great yes. showman who like, yes. yeah, like they just turn it on. They are Fred on. Rerun Berry. But they had guys yes. cleaning up the junk in the background and setting up their things for them. They could just walk, they can just walk in That's and sit true. down. Yeah, but their lives are miserable and they come out and the lights are on, the camera goes on, someone points to them and they're on. All That's, those what troubles go away. That's what we just did. That's what we just did 59 minutes ago. Because you and I cannot stand each other. But we're actually pretty good on camera. Podcast at filmphotographyproject.com. If you'd like to write us uh, via mail, which I really love, especially if you want to like send us stuff like Chocolates. chocolate. Like these, these great. I got to try that orange. We one. got cosmic brownies yes. from Alex. We used to get like, bad. we used to get like crickets and all kinds of oddball oh. stuff. Chocolate cover. We don't want chocolate. Weird. Cr- P.O. Box 264, Fairlawn, New Jersey, 074. 
four one zero. zero. It's on the envelope. Seven four one zero. It hits, I don't know. I, yeah, here it is. <laughs> that was correct. Two six four Fairlawn zero seven four one zero. Uh, feedback uh, on YouTube. Leave some. Leave some comments. Um, you know, if this is exciting for you folks, if you like, people are going to be floored, by the way, because people think that I'm, they think Matt is me and vice versa. You wish. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> people have no clue of what faces mm. go, go with, with what f- voice. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. So there you go. I would like Perfect. to, I'd like to thank you guys for coming. Oh, really appreciate it. Labor of love here. Yes. Yeah. And, and, uh, and free film. it's good that we're actually being kept to an hour. Exactly. And we'll be, we'll There's be back. no fat. All right, I'll see everybody. All right. (laughs) Why are you laughing? Stop. You're the one that's laughing. How's this? Mm, There we go. This is quality.